Welcome to another video from Learn PDR Online. My name's Tom and in this video today I'm going to talk you through my experience with Glexo Cold Glue. So we've got a nice juicy dent to work on on our training car, so let's get started. So I start the repair by warming up the panel. This helps to protect the paint, but also gives me good adhesion from my glue, whether that's hot or cold, to the panel itself. So I'm using my lightweight aluminium slide hammer and I've got my Glexo tab and cold glue set up. Now for anybody that's not used cold glue before, you do need to allow a good 10-15 minutes to set it up prior to first application. And that is to allow the glue to adhere to the tab before use. So when I apply the tab to the panel, I give it just a slight twist in motion. This also helps the glue adhere to the tab and the panel. And then just a couple of light taps to make sure it's on before giving it a few harder tugs. And you can just start to see the amount of force that I'm able to create with this cold glue. And already I'm starting to reduce the overall dent size. And then to remove the glue, I'm using a similar twist in motion. There's a bit of an art to it, and it will leave a little bit of oily residue, but it's easily removed with the glue or just with some of the rub and alcohol methylated spirits. But already you can see I've started to reduce the dent probably by about 50%. Now there's still a bit of work to do. So again, we're just gonna rework that glue, make it malleable, and then apply it straight into the center of my dent. Again, a bit of a twist in motion to help adhesion, a couple of light taps before giving it a good pull. But let's not follow that white rabbit, let's get back to some PDR. So now you can see after that second pull, I've significantly reduced the overall dent size, but there's still a lot of distortion and a lot of work to do. So here, now with the line board, we can see we've got a crown. So this is my primary crown, and then to the left, I have my secondary crown, which is primarily caused by my dent, which is indicated here in the white circle. So as you can see with the line board set up, there's still a fair bit of distortion in that panel. We've got some highs and lows. We can see the crowns and the low spots where the dent is. So plenty of work to do. I'm gonna continue trying to use the glue to see how much more I can pull out, but there's a good chance we're gonna to have to release some of that tension before the metal starts to flow. So once again, I'm gonna apply a little bit of heat then my slide hammer and give it a couple of taps. Now, as you can see this time, it didn't really give me much. It didn't release much of the pressure. So we're going to use a tap down. Now this has a leather tip and it is from Crocarb and it is brilliant for removing soft highs such as crowns. So now I'm working that crown, I'm using my tap down and just gently tapping down those high spots and that is releasing pressure, releasing tension into the area directly above. So this is really gonna allow the metal to flow so that when I come back to trying to do my next glue pull, hopefully it's gonna give me a little bit more once the tension has been released by removing this crown. And it's so important to just keep checking your work throughout the repair process, really keeping an eye on any kind of hidden damage. And as you start to release tension from one section of the panel, it's easy for that tension to move into another section. So it's always good to just keep reassessing, keep moving your reading device, whether that's a line board, fog or lights, and really make sure that you, the technician, can see exactly what it is you're trying to work on at any particular time. I really hope you find the videos that I create useful and informative. And if you do, don't forget to click that thumbs up, like the video, and if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to our channel. And just make sure you stay up to date with every video release we do. 
It really helps the channel grow. I really appreciate it. And if you've got any comments, any questions, just pop them below this video. I do respond to every comment we get. So now that I've released some of that tension, I'm able to go back to trying to pull up some of the low spots. So just here between the arrows, right where these lines splay apart is my low spot. So once again, I'm gonna attach my cold glue with a slight twist and then just give it a couple of light taps to bring that out. So it just brought up the low, but there's still a lot of work to do. Because it's quite tense, I'm gonna open up the dent and I always think it's good to speed up this video so you can really see the process of opening them up. And this will allow the panel to become softer and really start to help me lift up the lows. So I'm gonna continue on with the glue pulling process and just see if I can shift any more of that low spot with the cold glue. But at this stage, I'm starting to realize there's a bit more to it. So I've released a lot of the tension from around the dents, the high spots and the crowns. And it's that tension and those crowns that usually prevent the last of the low spots coming up. But I'm pretty sure there's something underlying behind the dent that's just preventing the last bit coming out. So we just give it a couple more pulls to see if I can lift any of the low, but we're gonna take a look on the inside and just see what's directly behind the dent. Cause just here, it feels very tight and there's a bit of tension that I just can't release. And now from the other side, we can see why. So just here, I have my brace and here is where it is bonded to the inside of the tailgate panel. So just here, we have an internal bracket or reinforcer that's bonded to the outer skin of the tailgate panel. So that is why it's caused me a bit of grief and that last little bit of low will not be pulled out with the glue. I find hot glue is generally a little bit stronger, so perhaps that would work, but because we've stripped out the tailgate and we've got good access, I'm gonna use my double bend bar with an R4 tip, and this is the area that is still low from the upside. So I can reach most of it by working around the brace but I may well need to get in with a whale tail or potentially release and cut some of that glue. So I'm gonna finish this repair off with um, traditional kind of bar methods. There will be a lot more tapping around and always finishing with a blend. But just now you can see me pushing and that R4 tip is directly behind where you see those lines pinching together. So it's a slow process, but I will work along that low spot of the panel and just gradually start to bring it back up again. So it's a slow, precise process lifting the lows with this method, but I'm just going to speed up this part of the video so you can get an idea of where I'm moving around my bar and really focusing around the glue on that internal brace. And as we come back to the top side, I'm now just using my blending hammer and just tidying up some of the kind of high spots, any of the crowns that still remain surrounding my dented area. So there's a couple of minor little lows that I can't reach from that angle. So I'm just gonna remove this tailgate adjuster and see what access I can get through here. So again, I'm still using that double bend bar with the R4 tip and I can just get the tip right to this section of the low now. So I'll continue on the pushing process and just start bringing up the low spots into all of the lines re true again. So I'm just gonna finish off this repair with some more tap and down. I've switched to the root beer just to allow me a bit more kind of accuracy in tap and down these fine little highs. But overall, I'm really pleased with how the repair process has gone. You can see how effective the cold glue was now, if that bracket wasn't in the way, I'd be fairly confident it would have just taken out the last of that low and maybe could have finished this without pushing. But overall, the repairs come out really well. And as always, I hope you've enjoyed the video, found it useful, informative. And if you have, don't forget to like the video and click subscribe.